Hi guys, I'm going to give you all a few minutes to come in because the, once again, the Facebook thing is kind of going nuts these days. Um, today we are going to continue our expl exploration of Canvas Workspace. We're going to talk about what weld, divide, subtract, and all of those options be. So uh, options are give me a thumbs up. Tell me you can hear me. I'm looking for comments to see where you are. Tell people where you are so that they know you where you are and you may have somebody near you that wants to craft with you because we are talking craft crafting. So we've got Carolyn here. Hi, Carolyn. Good to see you today. I'll see you again tomorrow. We've got um, Charlene here from Ohio. Sharon's here from Florida. Sheila's from West Virginia. Amanda's from Minnesota. So you guys are rolling in good. Um, you got your new W, NW. I'm not sure what that is. Um, good to see you, Marilyn, from, from, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's been a while since I've been there. Priscilla's here from Texas. Kathy, um, Tammy's here from Virginia. So it's good to see you guys. I really can't wait till we actually can get together in person, but this is going to have to be the next best thing. So today we're going to talk more about Canvas Workspace, as I was talking about before anybody showed up. Canvas Workspace, what do those little magic buttons weld, remove overlaps, and that mean? Because those can get confusing. Sometimes we know what to do. Sometimes we don't. Oh, you got your new Scan and Cut playbook, Kathy. Gotcha. Have you played with it yet? So. I'm going to do it with basics first, and then we'll use some practical applications. There are times that certain ones will work, and then there are times that they won't. And until you just start touching the buttons and figuring out what they do, you're really it's really not going to make any sense to you as to why you would ever use one versus the other. So without further ado, let's hit Canvas Workspace and see what we can't play with today. All right, so my Canvas Workspace is up. I'm going to close my library. And we are going to come in and just grab a shape. And I'm going to grab a square and I'm going to grab a different shape so that you guys can see different things here. So I've got a square and I've got an octagon. And I'm going to color them in two different colors so that you really get the idea of what happens here. And we're, let's give them that one bluish. Okay, so we've got two shapes. They are overlapping. Now, if I want those two shapes to be, make one shape, for whatever reason that might be, this would not be one of those that I would want to do that with normally, but that's what we'll talk about first. If I want two shapes to become one shape, I go to my edit menu and scroll down where it says process overlaps. <clears throat> and this button right here is weld. Weld makes whatever you've got out there into one shape. So the two shapes that we have that are overlapping will become one and they will take on the properties of the second one that's added. Okay, so now we're no longer two shapes. We are two, we are one single shape that can be adjusted. So let's undo that. Now, if I take those same two shapes and we choose divide, this one's a little bit different. Divide is going to give us three different shapes. So if I touch divide, it divides them into separate parts and you have three different shapes. So sometimes when you're trying to make a different shape, it's really cool to go ahead and use the divide button because it will divide it into multiple parts. Well, let's go all the way back to where we were to begin with. Now the next one is your remove overlaps button. Remove overlaps removes what's underneath the top layer. So if I choose remove overlaps, it removes the top layer from the bottom. Although it doesn't look like anything happened, it actually did. So it removed that layer underneath. Let's back it back up and we're back to our single shapes, our individual shapes there. And let's take the last one. Subtract is the one that can be tricky because sometimes it works really well and sometimes it looks like, oh my goodness, what did I do? Because everything disappears. And until you play with it, you won't know whether it's going to work for your particular activity or not. 
So this one is subtract. Subtract removes the top layer off of the back. Now, sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's bad. It's not, it's not always going to work the way you think it should work. So let's start with taking text. So I'm going to type in my name here and we're going to choose a script font. If my computer decides it wants to give me that drop down menu here. It is much slower when we are attached to the internet. Come on, drop down. There we go. So let's find us a script. Liverpool looks pretty good there. And it should give me a cursive text. So you notice that I'm cursive. I'm not overlapping yet and I want to overlap. So up here at the top, you have this thing that there's a zero there and that's your character spacing. So that's the space between your letters. If I want to smush my letters together, I'm going to put my character spacing at a negative number. And no, I can't do this to individual letters. I have to do it to the whole item. Now, if I were to cut this this way, what would happen? All of those little overlaps there would actually be cut. So you would see those, the individual cuts and it would not be optimal, correct? What would I do to keep that from happening? I want to make these all one item. So to do that, I would touch my weld button. When you touch weld, you'll notice that those overlaps are removed because now that is one single item. And that's, if you don't want individual letters cut out, you want it to be grouped, you would weld your shape. <clears throat> Now, if I undid that, let's see what happens if we do divide. Is it going to let us? Yes, it did. So if we divide, all of these little pieces come out. You see how that, you had three pieces there? And then you've got that piece there. So it divides those little pieces out. Let's undo back. to where we are one unit and we are one unit again. If we remove overlaps, it removes the overlaps so that they don't overlap and cut each other, but they are going to be individual parts. It's still moving as one, but you will see those individual cuts around there, around each item. So they would separate, it would not be one single unit. And subtract, I do not think will work with this one, but we'll check it out and see. If we touch subtract, it did subtract some of them, but not all of them. So it did subtract the top over some letters, but not all. So as I said, sometimes that one works, sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on its fancy for the day. If you choose weld, you are welded back together for the ones that had an overlap. So let's go back and undo here. And I'm going to come back and see, let's, let's check and see if we have any questions up here. All right, guys, any questions so far? We good? Those are your basics. Hi from Tulsa, Sally. Hi, Stephanie. Good to see you divide and conquer. You're so funny. Vera's here. Hi, Mary from Victorville, California. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Barbara. There's so many of you all out there. It's kind of hard to say hi at one time, but hi, guys. Thanks for joining. Good to see you today. So, any questions on weld, subtract, divide so far? Because I want you to kind of get the basics and get comfortable with playing with those little basics. So, let me come back. If I see a question pop up, I will look back over there and see. So let's delete that. Am I back to text? To text? Let's see here. You d it does help if you get on your own screen and not. All right, so we are back to basic text here. So I'm going to slip that and we are going to say weld and weld that together because now I want that as one unit. Now, I'm going to come in, I'm gr going to grab a shape. And let's take our ellipse shape here. 
I've added it in last. So it would actually be on top of the other item. If I come in and let's color both items so we can see what we've got going on. So if I put, try to put this one down here over the top of it, it's actually going to be un, under it. So there's two ways you can change that. You can go into your layers menu and you can reorder it. Or you could have cut and pasted to paste it back on top. Those are your two options. So if I had cut, let's undo what I just did. And undo. So here we go. So remember when I layered that down, it's underneath it. So let's cut that one. Control X and Control V. X cuts, V pastes. So there we go. Now let's grab them all and we may as well look at some alignment objects. If you want to align it to the left, that's your align left, align center, align right. Let's go back to center. Then you've got top, middle and bottom. So I'm going to go with center and center and my items ready to go. <clears throat> okay. If I weld it, that means the whole thing's going to become that circle. All right. So as I, the whole thing becomes the circle, there is no longer any text. If we look in our layer, in our layers menu, let me delete that image. I was playing earlier. <clears throat> There's only the one item. So let's, go back and undo. Actually, I got to get that back in before. Now let's delete that item. Okay. So weld is not our friend for that one. That's not what we wanted to do. If we divide, we will divide it up into parts. So if I divide this, we come over and look into our layers menu, you'll notice I have centers, I have an exterior, and then I have my letters. Let's go change those letters to a different color. I would use divide if I wanted two layers. <clears throat> that gives you the bottom layer and the top layer. But what happens when I move that bottom layer? my center didn't go with it. So in that instance, I would want to make sure that I put, move those two down together and grab them in the layers menu and group them. So now if I were cutting my two separate layers, there's that one. And then we can grab all of these and group them. Right mouse click and group. So that would be if you were wanting to layer two different items, one item on top of another. Let's undo and get back to where we are just Cindy on top of the circle. There we go. So now we're back to the, the beginning and let's grab them both again. I'm just drawing around them to grab them. All right. So let's go down here and let's do remove overlap. Remove overlap is going to do similar to what divide did, but this is the one I would probably use when, if I were planning on cutting my two different layers, because my Cindy remains one text and my letters in my bottom remains a solid object as well. Let's go back to the beginning. Now, if I want to cut out of Cindy in the center of that and don't plan on at doing any layers, Subtract is where I would, what I would use on this one. It will take out the text and leave an empty blank space there. So those are the options and how you would use them with a basic shape and your text. Everybody follow me so far? I'm going through this way faster than I meant to. So let's take, let's go a little bit further with that. Any questions so far? Nope. So let me come over here and let's grab a different shape. And let's say I want to add a heart within a heart, a decorative heart with inside my heart. 
and let's align them. So I'm going to select them all and I'm going to center and center. Okay. And let's grab two different colors. All right, so not optimal colors for hearts, but you'll get the idea. So we're going to grab these two and let's go back down to our edit menu. Welding, once again, would make it all one item. And for this, that would not be something that we want to do. Yes, Dan, Diane, you can watch again later. It will be on my Facebook page. It will remain on my Facebook page. So divide takes the heart out, leaves its shape. And that's two separate items. Now that one's an easy one for this particular shape. It's when you start getting multiple items in there that it gets a little bit more different. So let's do um, remove overlap. Remove overlap is going to do the basically the same thing for this particular activity. Subtract. So remove overlap. It's going to do the exact same thing, except for you don't know that anything happened until you look in your layers menu or you actually move away the top layer. Subtract is going to take that heart out of the center. And you'll have a one colored item heart with the with the decorative in, interior. Now, Mary, I'm not right clicking to check colors. I am clicking on my paintbrush, left clicking on the fill color, and then choosing my color. And really, color is just a visual thing. The software doesn't, the machine doesn't really recognize color. It's just a visual item to help you when you're designing. So it doesn't matter what color you put on there. It's just visual for me to help, to help me out. Now, last night I was playing and I thought, well, how about we go over here to our Brother Creative Center again? So let's go to, I'll start at the beginning, brother.com. <clears throat> and let's go to, scroll down to the bottom here, the Create at Home. We want to do Create at Home. And then you're going to scroll most of the way down to the bottom here to, to where it says Creative Center. Visit the Creative Center. And then we can go to Seasonal. So if we want to go to Seasonal and we want to choose Halloween. Actually, this was not where I got this. I lied. I'm going to view all, but these are just keep in mind. These are some activities that you can do. If you need some artwork, this is a great place coloring. There's coloring book pages and everything, but that's not where I got my artwork. I forgot. So let's come. I'm going to skip that and we're going to come back over here. So remember when you open up your software, you see your library. This is your design library of different activities that you can do. You can get back to that by clicking on the Canvas Project Pattern Collection button. It automatically loads by what season it thinks you know these days, so that you're in these days. And here we have some ghost garland. Well, I don't want to do the ghost garland. I actually want to do a hat with the band over the top of it. So I'm going to grab my hat and I'm going to grab my band and they're going to all be sitting there on top of the screen. No worries. We're going to delete what we don't want. So I'm going to click and I'm going to delete the eek and I'm going to click and I'm going to delete the boo and get rid of anything that I don't want. Now my bands are tied together. If I touch the second time, it will give me them individual and everything else is grayed out. So I'm going to get rid of the second band and I'm going to grab my bat and get rid of my bat and get rid of the moon. So now I'm left with two parts here and I'm going to layer them on top of each other so we can see what we've got going on. And let's zoom in. So if I want my band to be a little bit smaller, 
the little squares on the end let you shrink things in. So if I want to make sure that they're in within the parameters sitting on top of each other, this is the way I can do that. So we're there. Y'all ready to play again? We have our hat, our bands on top of it. If I select it all, go into my edit menu and come down here. Weld is going to make it all one item. So we're not even going to mess with weld right now. We're going to choose divide first. Divide, when I do that, everything is a separate part. Everything, including any overlap. So see those little bitty ed edges there that were overlapped? Those would be taken away. So let's undo that. And I'll come back to that in a minute as to why I might choose that one for this one. Remove overlap. Done. You don't think it's done anything, but it did. It took out the overlap. And this is all one unit, as is this. Divide, remember, they were all separate pieces. Let's grab them again. Oh, did I? Um, let's see where I am. Nope, I'm not. Let's undo back to where they are. Two separates. Yep. Okay, so let's grab them again. Subtract should take out the band out of the hat. This is still one unit, but this, the band is now gone. It's like superimposed. So if you had a gold shirt or something and you didn't really want to have two layers of vinyl, you could certainly do it that way. It would give that negative space. So we're going to undo that. And I'm going to show you why I might use divide on this one. If I come in here and I choose divide, as I said, it gave me multiple separate parts. So I've got my hat is by itself and the top of the hat is by itself. Great. I'm going to undo and I'm going to undo. And we're going to change those colors so that we can see what we've got going on different. So you all will understand what I'm about to say. And I want that one black. And the, as I said, this is just a visual. So now I can see that I have some extra parts hanging around here. And if I want to grab those extra parts and I want those to be one unit, this is when that weld comes back into hand, back into play. Notice how it now welded that as to one band instead of multiple pieces. So if I wanted to do this out of rhinestones, I'm going to get rid of that little piece of black right there. I might want to make them separate things a little bit here. What that would do would give me spacing for my rhinestones to actually fit into the area. And I'm going to shrink that piece down a little bit smaller. And then I need to make a few adjustments. Okay, so if I tap, I clicked that bottom once, I'm going to tap it again. And then I'm going to take these little nodes here and I'm going to move them. Oops. Got a little excited there. I want to grab them all and then I want to move them. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to draw around them. Don't click on one of them until you've drawn around them and then move it. So I'm giving it a little space. Going to do the same thing up here. Tap it twice. You have this design. It's in your Canvas workspace. It's on the Patterns Library. It's one of the free designs for this month. There we go. So now, I have the Rhinestone Kit activated on my Canvas workspace. So if you have the rhinestone kit, you're set to go. If you don't, you may want to think about it. We're going to touch this button over here on the right side. There's my rhinestone capability. Right now it says none. My stone sizers are 10. If I want a different stone size, I can come pick a different stone size. The smaller the stone, the more stones it takes. But it can also get a bit more intricate if you do that. 
If you just want an outline, it will go around the outline edges. Not really what I want for this one. I want to do a grid fill, I do believe. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to choose grid. And it has automatically converted my design into rhinestones. If I would now want to move my parts back together a little bit closer, I can do that. I can also edit individually if I want to do that, or I can come in and add a stone at a time. So if I touch this button right here, that lets me come in and put rhinestones in to fill in any spots that I don't think it did well. So, all right, I'm going to come back over and answer questions here. I don't see any new questions here. Uh, let's see here. So yes, Diane, you can watch this again later after we're finished. It will appear on my Facebook page. You can share it to your timeline if you would like to, and then you'll always know where it is, but it will be on my Facebook page. I, I did not right click to do colors. I was left clicking to do everything. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Holly, you need that design. So you want me to show you back again where I got that design? Because it's, um, it's built into your design library. Let's see here. I'm going to delete all of these guys. Oops. Got to get on the right screen, guys. I'm going to grab it all and delete it. So I found this in my pattern library. I scrolled down a little bit. I, I really think you guys, if you get in here and play, you will have fun with this. I grabbed the main, that section and I grabbed this section. And then I got rid of anything that I didn't want. I tapped that one twice to get the bottom. It would be a really cute little banner too though. And then I moved my band to where I wanted it to be. So I, I think that would be a really cute design. I, I might put underneath it your broom or mine or something along that name, nature. What rhinestone kit do I need that um, for any machine? This rhinestone kit is specific to the scan and cut, any scan and cut machine. Yes, you can turn any design into a rhinestone design with the rhinestone kit activated on your Canvas workspace. It'll, that gives you that capability. If I want rhinestone text, I can come in and grab my text tool. Oh, by the way, there are, you do get rhinestone designs. So if I come over here and I look at my designs, as I scroll down through here, it will show me what kits I have. The one that looks like a little stone, these are my rhinestone designs. So I can pull these in one at a, the, the text in one at a time. Let's see here. So now, while we're at this, we may as well show you another basic feature on the soft, on the, in the software. So let me zoom in. Yes, Rhinestone Kit is an extra kit. It's an add-on. So how can I get these things lined up? Well, there, there are a couple of ways. So I'm going to do everything to the bottom. We're going to go to our Edit menu. And we're going to line bottom, but that's not going to take care of my Y, is it? Because the Y is not aligned to the bottom. At that point, I would then grab my Y and I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to take it down to that bottom grid. Now those are aligned. Now, if I want them evenly spaced, you decide how much space you want between them. And you can actually set a number. Let's say we want 0.04 and we want them spaced horizontally apart. They are now 0.04 spaced horizontally apart. If you want a 0.10, they are now evenly distributed 0.10 apart. So when you're bringing in designs individual, that is the easy way to grab it. Um, <clears throat> so there, there you go. And as you scroll down through here, you have more rhinestone designs that you can work with. These are all set sizes. 
it takes it a minute to respond because it's got to look at all the rhinestones. And I'm going to zoom out and let's look. So if I want to know how many stones this is going to take, and I will tell you, I do not count my stones. But if I want to know how many stones that's going to take down on my rhinestone area, number of rhinestones, it tells you how many stones that there are and what size those stones are. You can have multiple sizes of stones in one design, but that tells you how many you've got for that particular design. And you'll notice when you select a rhinestone design, they are not resizable. There are no squares around them to be able to resize. They are the size that they are. Okay, <clears throat> let me go back up and answer some questions here. All right, let me get to the right screen. There we go. Okay, yes, you can turn. The, the rhinestone kit is the, the scan and cut rhinestone kit. It goes with any of the scan and cut machines. Basically, what happens is it creates a template. It cuts out all of those circles out of a template. You throw your stones down on top of it, brush them in, and then take transfer um, tape, lift them up, put them on your garment, and press them on. And somewhere in this room, I have one of those. I just don't know if it's near me because <clears throat> I didn't think I'd get this far today. I actually was going to do rhinestones next week, but I didn't think I'd get there. The rhinestone is extra. Um, after I separated the parts, where did I go to work with the nodes? I tapped with my select tool on the item two times. The second time brings up the node. Give the software time to respond, especially if there's a lot of detail in there and that will give you those edit notes. Is there a separate Disney rhinestone kit? Uh, let's go look. I don't know if we have, a, it, it's not a Disney rhinestone kit. We may have Disney rhinestone designs. There are some built in the 230D and 230DX. So I don't know if, if, it's, if we have those available for purchase. Hold on and let's go look. So where do I go find my Disney designs? If I come to my pattern library, I touch the Disney button up here at the top. And it's going to open the browser so that I can see Disney. And I got to move that browser down here. Because that's not where I need it to be. Move you down. Okay, so now I'm going to log in. And let's see what Disney designs do we have. Why did you not log me in? I guess because I put the wrong password in. There you go. All right, so here are our Disney designs. I do not see a rhinestone Disney collection. So no, we do not have Disney rhinestones outside of the machine if that answers that question. Let me come back over here and let's answer some quick questions. Okay. Speaking on at, of add-ons, can I go over the enhanced tracing kit now or later? Maybe I'll do that next week, but uh, it depends on how long we go today, where we're at. So let me see here. Um, is my playback applicable to the older scan and cut machines? That's a hard question to answer. I, with the new machines, we do not have the, we have auto blade technology. So we don't have to go in and set blade settings. I did not cover anything about blade settings. Um, so, uh, you know, that's, the buttons are gonna be the same. They're gonna be in different places. You may see different, so your retrieves will be in different places. Basics are going to be the same, but you won't get how, how deep does my blade need to be because we are in auto blade technology and I didn't need to do that. Does P Design or BES4 do rhinestones? P BES4 does. P Design 11 does not. You do have to have Power Pack 2 in order to do rhinestones in BES4. 
where did I set the spacing? Okay, I'll show you that again. And hold on, um, Susan, don't let me forget to answer that question. I'm going to answer the rest of the ones that I have here. What's the difference between the SDX 230DX and the 230D? Um, the difference between the two is what comes in the box. The D the 230D came with the roll feeder, the, the rhinestone trial kit, not the starter kit, the trial kit. It came with the tool kit and mine somewhere around here. Usually there's one sitting on my desk, but evidently I don't have it on my desk today. Um, the tool kit. So, um, it came with two, uh, a standard mat and a low tech mat, a standard, the black blade, black auto blade and the black fabric, excuse me, the black auto blade and the fabric auto blade, thin fabric auto blade. The 230DX no longer comes with the tool kit. It comes with the roll feeder. It comes with the vinyl, auto, the Disney vinyl auto blade kit and the everyday vinyl auto blade kit collection. It comes with three mats, standard, um, low, and fabric. It comes with the three blades auto blade, your black auto blade, your fabric auto blade, and the blue vinyl auto blade. Um, those are, it no longer comes with the toolkit. Those are the main differences between the two. The same patterns are built into them. You get the Disney roll feeder designs you, just like the D did. So it, this, it's just what comes in the box is the difference between the two. You got the rhinestone kit with your um, scanning cup, but now you need to buy a program. If you got the, oh, okay, you got the rhinestone trial kit. I guess you got a 230DX or a 230D, one of the two. Um, that is a trial kit. There are some built in Disney rhinestone designs on the 230D and DX that those, that, that allows you to get started with to see if you like bling. It doesn't give you the add on for your program. So you do have to get the starter kit for that. What is the playbook? The playbook is a book that I wrote for brother that your brother dealers are selling that teaches you how to use your play, your um, scanning cut. It goes through all of the basics. There are eight projects in it. There, there's a glossary that you can print out to where you know what all of your icons do and you can have that sitting next to you. And if you lose it, you can print it again. There are printable projects there. There are videos that go along with the lessons in the book. Um, there are designs that go along with the lessons in the book. So there's quite a bit of information in there. Um, it's new to brother this year. Can I take a Disney design and make it into brother? No, I'm not allowed to edit Disney designs. Um, you have the enhanced image tracing. So I, we'll talk about that another day. Today is probably not that day. If you brought the Disney scan and cut, I still need to purchase more of the Disney designs or that. Um, not all of the Disney designs are built into the Disney machine. There are some different ones that they keep coming out with. There are, so there are differences. Um, but on the other hand, if I don't have the Disney machine, there's many designs that I don't have access to because they have not released those to the general public to purchase. Uh, sure, get a new machine. I'll enable you on that one. The, the new auto blade technology is really nice. It makes life so much simpler. You're not cut, you don't cut through your mats. It's just a really nice little feature. Um, you didn't get a roll feeder. It may have been a difference in what your dealer did. I, you know, I don't know. They may have marked them down and didn't include the roll feeder. I, I can't answer that. I don't know. Um, What's the difference between doing the rhinestones with the kit or be using BES4 to do it? Well, <clears throat> one of the differences is in BES4 when I'm using that right, sometimes it works better in BES4, sometimes it works better in Canvas Workspace. But if I'm in BES4 and adding rhinestones, I can actually bring an embroidery design up and add um, rhinestones to parts of the embroidery design so that I can see how it's going to look in my embroidery. I really like being able to do that. That is very functional for me. So instead of having just to kind of guess how big that shape is going to be, 
I can get it in the exact spot with the embroidery design and know whether I'm going to like it or not. That to me is super exciting. Um, <clears throat> good deal, Charlene. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, Barbara, you just got your playbook. All right. There are, are there two canvas workspace for one for the, okay. There are actually two versions. There is one that lives on the web. The one that lives on the web, you can use on any device. I can use it on my phone. I can use it on my tablet. I can use it on my computer because it is on a web based browser. Um, that means any just connected device, anything connected to the internet can access that uh, through a browser. It does best through Chrome or Firefox or Safari. <clears throat> there are two different versions that are considered PC versions. One's a Windows, one's a Mac. They have the same, those two have the same features. The web version is the only place that you can download your Disney designs. It's the only place you can access Disney designs. The PC versions, the Mac or the Windows version, allows you to work in layers. I tend to work more on my PC than I do in the web version. The web version has the advantage though that if I need a line to both cut and draw, it allows me to assign that feature to that line. Whereas on my PC, it either cuts or it draws. You can't have it do both. And when I'm cutting HTV, I like to cut and draw because if I cut first and then draw afterwards on HTV, it allows me to see where I need to weed better, peel, peel the excess away. Um, I find it easier to see it if I've drawn over it. That's just a visual thing. The older you get, the worse our eyes get, you know, it's, it's life. So that is um, one of the things I'd say. So uh, Heidi, I'm glad you got to watch today on time. Oh, thank you, Sally. I'm so glad that you're enjoying the playbook. I worked really hard on it. As I said, that's my COVID project, but I will also say it's probably the fastest I've ever written a book in my life. I started on it the end of January and finished it in June, but the editing wasn't done until just before back to business. So just at the end of July. Uh, let's see here. You won't let me know when you could rent me out for a couple hours. I'm always rentable. So <laughs> get with me. I, I do do private lessons. The vinyl kit show up on online canvas workspace. It shows on my PC version. Yes, your vinyl kit should show up on, let's look. It should show up on our web version, but let's see. Let's go to this and look. Let's look on our pattern collections. And let's see, my vinyl auto blade. Actually, no, those are all on the PC version. So we just answered that question for everybody. The vinyl designs, oh, that was a lovely thing when I flew my hands through my hair. Uh, the vinyl designs are actually only show up on the PC version. The Disney ones are probably going to be downloaded. So let's see here. It, you will have fun with that one. My, I took my, guys, I had a 550 and I took it down to my stepmother and she is having a darn blast with it. If you haven't started with yours, get out and play with some of the canvas workspace projects those pro that project library is huge we made boxes of all kinds she's thrilled she's made boxes she's made stickers for everything she's basically labeling something for everybody and those library projects are huge that's a great resource for us yes that is a great christmas present to ask for do you have to log no, you do not. You have to log into your Canvas workspace. It will direct you to log into it. You do have to have been online with be, the last time that you were on it so, so that it recognizes that you have an account. Uh, I hope you enjoy it, Charlene. Let's see here. How do you know if you're on a PC version or a web? Well, if you go to your start button and you choose Canvas Workspace and it opens up, then you're on your PC. If you had to log into a browser, if you had to open up your internet to go to it, then you're on the internet. 
So let's see here. You made my pumpkin cake. cake. <laughs> Did you enjoy that last week? That was fun. Uh, you know, I, who knew that you could take just a simple design and ch change it up and make it fun. So, um, all right, let's go back. What, what was that question I needed to answer? The spacing. Okay. Let me go back to, to Canvas Workspace and we will talk about spacing. Let's see here. Let's get off my browser and let's go back in here. <clears throat> so how did I do the spacing between those letters? I'm just going to put in it, four letters here. It doesn't matter which I'm assuming y'all don't care. You just want to know how I did the spacing. So I'm going to select them all and I'm going to go to my edit button and I'm going to align them to the bottom. Now I want to distribute them apart a certain distance. It defaults to one. Okay. Just so you know that it defaults to one inch. If I want them less than that, then I need to type in what I want. It, you can't go down further than let me go back to the default, which is one. It goes down in quarter inch increments. So you can actually do negative numbers, but you can also type in the spacing that you want here. And this is where I am down here, distri distribute space. When I touch this button right here, it distributes them out with that separation between them. Okay. Heidi, it probably means you're not on the PC version. I don't know. Did you start it from your start button down here? Or so if I go start and then type in Canvas Workspace, did you click that? Or did you go to a web browser first? That's the only way I know the diff what you've done. The diff Does yours look like mine does here or does it look like it does on when you're online? There are two different. They look totally different. So if I go back to Canvas Workspace here, the, if you had to, if this is the screen that you see, you are on the browser based version and you have to log into it every time. Okay. So that was the, how we did the spacing. Let's come back over here and let's talk a few other little basic tools here. Every kit that you get, brings you different designs. So I showed you rhinestones. These are all of the rhinestone designs that come with the rhinestone kit, but that doesn't mean that's all the rhinestone designs you can do, which I showed you. Um, yeah, I showed you that with the, with the witch's hat. You can do anything you want to with those designs. Stamping kit. I use my stamping kit a lot to create appliques. Um, Imagine this stamp right here, though, being a little rhinestone design. If I came up, click my rhinestones, I could go go to the outline and we could just have us a little outline of a sewing machine. Isn't that cute? So I don't know that I stamp that much, but I use those little designs. You also have line embossing. These are really nice for drawing. They're good for card making. So just because it says you, you're embossing doesn't mean that you can't use it for something else. Um, it, it, you always have options and these are resizable. But they are, the single line designs are meant for drawing or for line embossing. And then you have, and these, I think this one right here would be fun. So, Let's say you needed an embroidery background. I'm going to go outside of the box here for a little bit, guys. Let's say I wanted this to be an embroidery design. It's perfect lines, is it not? So I'm going to export that FCM. Go up to my file menu, export FCM. And we're going to put this as backdrop, background. I'm going to do it to my computer. So, and I'm just going to leave it in downloads um, background. So now if I have P design and I want to use that as a background, 
This is very doable. It's going to open up. And we are going to go to our scan and cut button. We're going to close this window first and touch our scan and cut button and import. I need to tell it where I want it to import from and I'm going to import it. I just dropped it in my downloads because it was easier. So there's my background. Now I'm going to change my hoop size to let's do a luminaire hoop. And I'm going to close that and then shrink it. It is already as an outline. It's just as a very pale colored outline. So if I wanted it in a different color, all I have to do is actually I'm going to go up here because this is the quicker way to change it. Change my color. Would that not decorate fabric so cool? I thought that would be a lot of fun. Um, or you could use it, as I said, as a decorative background. You can drop a different design on here. Let's say we want something out of our design library. Oh, that's too small. Let's pick something else. So think outside of the box. Not everything, I don't use everything for the purpose that it's there, but because I have it there, it's kind of fun. You could do the same exact thing in BES4. So if you have Power Pack 2, no, Power Pack 1. If you don't have a Power Pack, you could probably do it, but it'd be a little bit more challenging. We'll look at it both ways. More, more steps to it if you don't have it. So let's see here. It's given, it's coming up. Give me just a second. While it's doing that, let me come answer questions. All right. Um, how do you get the PC version? Somebody, uh, Heidi asked. So when you go into Canvas Workspace on the web, down at the bottom of it, it says there's a PC version available. Would you like to download it? It automatically prompts you to do that if you would like for it to do, to, to do that, unless you've told it not to. Um, okay, Carletta, if you purchase the workbook, um, the lettering so easy for version for BES4, there is a group and that group, there's a link to that in the very back of the book. It is called lettering so easy. Be sure to answer the questions and, um, agree to the terms because that's how I know who's got what. Which version is best? There is no best version. As I said, there's times that I use the desktop and times that I use the um, web ver version. Most of the time I'm working on the desktop because I like to work in layers. So sometimes if I do it in the, in the cloud, I'll still, if I do it on the web, I'll still come back down and work on it in layers so that I can arrange things. All right, let's see here what else we got. An order version. I'm not sure what an older version. I don't that that the older version doesn't include. Um, I, I wish I knew who sold you the older version because that's if they're sold you the older version for BES4. Even I did. If you all notice, I did not sell a B. I did not sell a workbook for BES4. And if you contact, if you ordered it from me saying letter you ordered lettering so easy for BES, I would say I canceled the order because that's not appropriate. Um, and I, there's nothing I can do about that. Um, it wasn't, there's too many changes between that one and this one. And this, this version is the one that I've offered this group for as free for a year to help support you through your learning. Um, all right. So I think my BES4 has come up. So can I use the luminaire to repeat the pattern and say the thing, same thing over and over and over again? You certainly could. Um, you could actually set it up as a custom custom hoop in your PE design and repeat it with the snowman. Dealers carry the power packs. I don't sell BES4. I sell books to support the product. 
Um, my Canvas workspace, that was in my line embossed designs is where I found that design. Okay, so let's go back over to our my desktop here and look at BES4 and I'll show you how it works, how that would work there. And this is probably the last thing we're going to get to do today. So I'm creating a new design. I'm going to go to my paste setter button and I'm going to choose import import artwork. I have all power packs activated. So if you don't have, see import artwork, yours may say import FCM. And we are going to go to my PC. Come on. There we go. Downloads. My computer's decided to go psychotic here. Okay, there's the background FCM. We are going to open it up and we are going to go to our tools tab. Power Pack 1 gave me the capability of converting that to a run. Press convert to run and your design is ready to go. Now, if you don't have that power pack, let's see what happens if we convert it to an applique. You get an applique, but then we could do this. There is a trick. We can right mouse click and preserve as stitches. And we could delete all of the stitches underneath. So it's doable. It's a workaround, but let me do that a little slower. I converted it to an applique which gave me three different sections. I'm going to click the last section, press delete, press the second section, press delete, and then I'm left with a running stitch to go around it. And now it's hopping around like crazy, but that's how you do it. Now, it, somebody asked, could you do it on the Dream Machine? Let me come back up here and we'll answer the last of the questions. If I get my mouse in the right spot, there we go. All right, is there something similar on the Dream Machine? If you wanted to do that design and you wanted to create it through my design center, you could um, draw it out on your Scan and Cut instead of embossing it. Use one of your pens and draw it out. Then you could take that to my design center and scan it in and convert it to a line. You could also um, print it and basically draw it out on the Scan and Cut, scan it back into the Scan and Cut, and you scan to USB. That scans it in as a JPEG. That actually will scan better in your Dream and your Luminaire. You put it in the machine and you choose Line and you choose from USB. And that will get your image in there and you can play with it. That is one of the that idea is one of the items in the Scan and Cut playbook, how to create a design. Now, I did show you how to create an applique design, but the basic concept is the same from a scanned image. Um, do I have a book for? Yes, I do. It's called Lettering So Easy, and it's it's a basic guide. And we are on, I think, week five, four or five of our, le I'm walking them through some of the lessons. We're not going to go through the whole book, but I'm getting people kick started in there. I have a group that I answer questions about it if you get stuck. Um, and that's, that's where to go. Uh, power packs are add on to your BES4. So we kind of covered P design BES4 and scanning ca Canvas Workspace. I had only planned on doing Canvas Workspace today, but when I get questions, I answer them. Um, BES4 is a lettering and customizing program that has so many to tips and tools and tricks in it. The power packs are add on items that you can add to that software. They are purchased upgrades for that software. We have power pack one, which is more embroidery features. It gave nap control. It gave two way communication to the dream machine. It gave um, the ability to send multiple designs at once to the machine. It gave nap, I already said nap control, auto split for the jumbo hoop for the 10 needle machine and convert to decorative fills. Power Pack 2 was all about scan and cut. 
all about artwork. So it gave you more artwork functions. Some of the tools that I use there are easier to use than what I do in Canvas Workspace, but sometimes it's easier to do it in Canvas Workspace than it is in BES4. So it just depends. No one program has everything in it. If it did, it would be like everybody had the same brain and none of us do. Um, hold on, Heidi, I'll show you where to find it. Would it stitch all those running stitches? It would stitch all of the running stitches. It would not stitch the jumps. Yes, you purchased the playbook for the scan and cut from your local brother dealer. I do not sell those. I wrote it for a brother to sell. I'm glad you enjoyed today. So hold on, Heidi, and I'll show you how to get Canvas Workspace for your desktop. Um, let's go over to my desktop again, back into Canvas Workspace. So when you log in, you should get a splash pop up that asks you if you would like to um, get the PC version. But if you don't, which I don't see it right now, down here at the bottom, you're going to get a scrolling little information item. Software update has been released for some scan and cut models. That's not what we're looking for. Here we go. That's the Mac version. I'm looking. I must, I, I turned off the little click of information. So let me show you the other place to go get it since I can't find it that way. Support.brother.com. Support.brother.com. Product search. Scan and cut whatever model you have. It doesn't matter. Press search. And we're going to, I'm going to pick the 230 and we will choose downloads. And it will decide what you've got. And down here is Canvas Workspace. So support.brother.com. Okay. Um, yes, you can use the Power Pack 2 without having Power Pack 1. The only thing you have to have is the base level of the software to be able to get anywhere. You, you can't get a Power Pack without having the base level, but you can skip any Power Packs that you want to skip. Okay. Um, Charlene, glad you enjoyed the lesson today. Are you okay? I, I don't know who you are, but thanks. Glad you're glad you're ordering that. Uh, good to see you today, Barbara. Go cook dinner. My dog's about to tell me it's time to go. She hasn't come in here and, and shaken her head yet, but it's time. So it's I, I'm sure that's a good day. So <clears throat> you guys have a great rest of the day. If you are in my private class tomorrow, I will see you tomorrow at 3.30. Actually, I think I may move us up just a little bit because Princess is having to tie a knot in it but by the end of the day. But um, I'll let you know. And you guys have a great rest of the day. I shall see you next week. Bye.